Hey people, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Welcome to part three of my ranking every single Iron Maiden song. So, part one was 165 to 130, part two was 129 to 100, I think, and now we're gonna do number 99 up until 69. Hey, so we're gonna do 30 songs, uh, just continuing through, racing through this because it's a lot, it's a long thing to get through. So in in hype of in the hype of morning Paul Diano with all that stuff going on, I thought what better way, well, you know, not what better way, but better kick off this thing, you know, keep it going nice and strong, coming in strong at number 99. We have the thin line between love and hate from Brave New World. Yeah, I mean, this one's like pretty much from here on out, all these songs are damn amazing. You know, I've, I've done the last two episodes where we shit on a few, uh, but you know, from pretty much here on out, these are all amazing. Thin Line Between Love and Hate is an epic song. Um, pretty sure it's the closer off the top of my head from Brave New World, and it's just damn awesome. So that's that. Number 98, Monster Gur from Dance of Death. Probably the heaviest song of the album, if not one of Maiden's most heaviest songs, full stop. That riff at the start, dun -dun 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 -dun, it's just like, oh, you know, it could almost be down tuned. Number 97, The Prisoner from Number of the Beast. Yeah, I saw this one live on the Death the, on the um, Days of Future Past tour, and it was a weird one to throw into the set list, but it worked. The riff was great. The drum intro was awesome. It was just a fantastic song. Number 96, The Ides of March, the opening from the Killers album. Uh, so yeah, a fantastic intro. Um, I would I would really love to see this one back in the set list for the uh, Run For Your Life tour. I thought, I think that would be just an epic opener, you know, because it was an epic opener way back when, you know, on their on all their little early early um, shows, and it was great for the early tours gig that they did in the 2005 era. So yeah, just fantastic. I love that opening. Number 95, Age of Darkness from Blade, from The X Factor. I think this one's fine. You know, this one's a good song. On the edge of darkness. You know, it fits Blaze's um, tone brilliantly, and it fits The X Factor tone of the whole album, so that's awesome. Number 94, Strange World. Yeah, um, I do love this song, don't get me wrong. It's one of Paul's more beautifully sung songs and the solos in it, both at the start and at the end, are just so damn good. It's a beautiful song, but there is so much better stuff off the debut album. Number 93, Out of the Shadows from A Matter of Life and Death. Um, not my most played song off A Matter of Life and Death, I won't lie, but it's still good. I think this, the chorus is very powerful. I think Bruce said it's about being born, king for a day, you know, out of the shadows and who we are and all that. Now, this will shock a few people. Number 92, Revelations from Peace of Mind. Not my favorite song and definitely, I've come to learn, not my favorite album either. Great songs on it, but Revela uh, Revelations, yeah, isn't one of them. It's a bit slow and just, not that exciting in my opinion. Number 91, Fear is the Key from Fear of the Dark. This one's fine, still a bit dumb because it's off Fear of the Dark. Fear of the Dark's not my favorite album um, at all. It's my last favorite album. So, but the intro to Fear is the Key I think is cool. And I think this song is about the AIDS pandemic. So that's kind of fun, I guess. Number 90, Riding on the Wall from Sinjutsu. Uh, when this came out, it was great and I loved it. But then the radio got a hold of it and they thrashed it over and over and over again. And uh, I saw this one live as well. And it was fantastic live. Don't get me wrong but i'm over that song now so yeah uh number 89 judgment of heaven from the x factor another blaze song judgment of heaven waits for me pretty sure that one is a good woho song you know it's a good song and i i do get a kick out of it i get a kick out of a lot of blazer songs to be honest uh, number 88 the time machine from days of future past not my favorite off the syndrome album but still a good contender did it need to be in the in the days of future past set list no i wouldn't have put it in there but more or less, it's fun. There are some key maiden riffs in that one. I'm pretty sure it's that. Um, there's that almost Hallow Be Thy Name inspired little melody in it. That's that's always so cool. Number 87, Flight of Icarus. Yeah, not my favorite off Peace of Mind. Um, I, after It's a great song, don't get me wrong, but after listening to it for so many years, like 15 years listening to Maiden now, it's I've overplayed it and it's just, to me, there is just so much better stuff. Don't get me wrong, the, power, the powerful chorus is awesome. Bruce does great, but yeah, just, not my favorite. Uh, moving on, 86, From Here to Eternity, the stadium rock, hard rock song for Austria of the Dark. It's fine, it's good, it's a bit chanty, you know, stadium-like obviously, but I find it catchy. I think it's the final song in the Fear of the, in the Charlotte the Hargus saga off the top of my head, so that's pretty damn good. Uh, number 85, Isle of Avalon from, uh, what's it called? From Final Frontier. Uh, yeah, one of the more longer ones off that album. There's like four long ones on there, I think. And that one's awesome. So yeah, um, the chorus in that one is great. I do love the chorus in that. It's so much fun. Number 84, To Tame a Land, the album closer from Peace of Mind. Uh, don't get me wrong. 
like I said before, fantastic song. The outro to that, I think it's cool how it changes, like it just changes keys over and over again. That thing is just so cool. Number 83, The Longest Day. Another real heavy one from Matter of Life and Death. How long is The Longest Day? It's a, it's about D-Day landings, I'm pretty sure. That one is epic, go listen to it. Number 82, The Nomad from uh, by Brave New World. Uh, yeah, again, a bit like Thin Line Between Love and Hate. This one's another epic one, a big long one. The chorus in this one is just loud and dramatic. It's just, it's really fun. Number 81, Brighter Than a Thousand Suns. Not my favorite, obviously, but powerful. Another long one, the riff in it is heavy as, and just, yeah, brighter than a thousand suns. The vocal is a little bit stretched in my opinion, but it's still all right. Number 80, Lost in a Lost World from Sinjutsu. Um, this is another, this is a weird 10 minute song. It's track four, I think, on um, on um, on Sinjutsu. And um, the fact, yeah, it starts with seagulls and acoustics and then has another iconic, like, Hello Be Thy Name type riff in it that just really honed back to early Maiden. That was nice. I was like, that's cool. Number 70, the Unbeliever, the final track from The X Factor. I've always loved this song. The little ha harmonic intro and whatever that intro is. Do, 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 it's a much, uh, it's quite a call and response type song. Brow, brow, now. You know, it's just great. The little whammy wank fest that Yannick does in the solo. I just think it's catchy, that's all. <laughs> Number 78, Fortunes of War from the same album. Oh, again, I've loved this song because it's dark and it's slow and it's brooding and Blaze does great on it. I just love that song so much. I think it's awesome. Number 77, Shadows of the Valley from Book of Souls. Uh, the reason that this one's here is for the section, it's like the it's like three quarters of the way where it's um, into the valley of death, fear no evil and all that. That part is just awesome. Number 76, uh, Back in the Village from Power Slave, the weakest song of the Power Slave album, in my opinion. While it's still great, it's still heavy and chuggy, it's just very, not out of place, but it's just some, well, is it simple? I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's just the weakest one, in my opinion. Number 75, The Aftermath, another Blaze Bailey song. This one's cool. After the war. Um, I just sang Fortunes of War there, but you know the one. After the war. That's it. What does a soldier become? Yeah, I think it's fun. You know, it's dark and it's brooding. But like the whole X Factor album, it's awesome. I love it. Number 74, Coming Home off the Final Frontier album. This one's just nice. Okay, give it a listen to those who don't like it. But yeah, like it's just a song about, you know, Bruce being a pilot and after touring the world for so long, just coming in and landing. You know, we'll ride this Thunderbird and it's just like, oh, the chorus is cool. Okay, I don't understand how you don't like it. Um, number 73, The Ballad from Jutsu, Darkest Hour. That one's fun. It's about uh, Winston Churchill, pretty sure. Or is it? Or is it just, is it um, coincidentally got the same name as that film? I don't know. But either way, one of Adrian's, it's, it's like this, it's like one of the weird, other than the epics, it's definitely a standout song of the Sinjutsu album. Really, really cool. Number 72, Children of the Damned from Number of the Beast. The ballad again. Um, the song is fine. The song is beautiful. Again, I've heard it a lot. I did see this live in 2016. That was great. The solo in it is just insane. That tappy section, which I found out not that long ago, is actually the same notes as the one solo from Metallica. Like the tapping, sec the tapping section. Crack up that it's the same notes. But honestly, it's so fun. Go listen to it. Um, 71. Running silent, running deep from No Prayer for the Dying. If you're a fan of the, the troopers and the evil that men do's and the gallop side of Maiden, there is no excuse for you not liking Running Silent, Running Deep. It's the same kind of vibe. It's nowhere near as epic as the ones mentioned before, but it's good. It's bouncy and it's catchy and it's very typical Maiden. Number 70, another Blaze one. Look for the truth. Another, you know, just straightforward power, not power ballad, but you know, just powerful one. I really like Look for the Truth. I think it's great. And then the last one for this entry of this series, Number 69, The Fallen Angel, that real heavy one from Brave New World. It's chuggy and it's heavy and it's so damn good. It's sort of rem it sort of it shows remnants of Wrathchild in my opinion. But yeah, honestly, that is a great song. I need to listen to Brave New World again. It's that good. Right, there we are, team. There is part three for my ranking every single Iron Maiden song. Slowly getting through it. Let me know down below what your favorites are. I hope none of them were mentioned in this video. So yeah, keep an eye out for part four, uh, which we will do 68 uh, I don't know, 38, 35, maybe even 30. Actually, we'll go to 30 because then we can do 30 to 1 and it'll be five videos. So that's cool. Like I said, well, I didn't say it at the start, actually, like I just said before. Let me know your favorites down below. I hope none of them were mentioned here. Keep an eye out for part four. But until that happens, everybody, stay inside, stay safe, jam the maracas like my little man, and I will see you all in the next video. See you later.